So Fear the Walking Dead Season 7 Episodes 9 and 10 were trying to achieve the same thing, or at least that's what ended up happening in each of these episodes. A new character would be introduced only to die the same episode in an impactful way that would push the character they came to get close to onwards in the story. But it had that typical fear clumsiness to it. It just wasn't the strongest way to invite people back into the season. I mean, we left off and Alicia saying to Strand, we're going to war. Cringy, but somewhat exciting. You would have thought we'd get back into the season, but we're talking about dreams again, and we had to watch Charlie and the little butterfly picnic. But you see, for what's wrong about these episodes, they actually put right. I mean, you know me, I was sitting there fuming, but Ali died. She lost a little boyfriend and it was back to crying and the acting was actually really good. And I actually enjoyed a lot of the scenes with Paul. But again, I just don't think it was the wisest thing to do to bring people back into the season. Because I'm pretty sure most people watching it are just going to think, oh, okay, so it's going to be this all season, is it? When there's actually really exciting, really big stuff on the horizon. So I, don't, I just don't think they've done themselves any favours. But nonetheless, I'm going to briefly break down both these episodes and tell you the most important stuff that I thought was in them. Which, of course, includes massively by putting the title immunity now i know how allergic some people can be to that word and trust me i'm with you on that but let me tell you something fear is going there i figured if it come from a bite you would have turned by now what's left of it didn't look infected still you were burning up no matter how much medicine i gave you why are you idling so hot you sick no that's not it then what is it? But to take it with a grain of salt, which you definitely need to, remember Fear is no stranger to feeding you these big mysteries, these really interesting storylines, only to have the reveal be something almost enragingly dull. But I would start to put that past Fear, and I think it's wearing off. I think it's fair to say they've earned some of that trust back in regards to uh, disappointment. And with things like New Walkers literally being confirmed, things like Immunity, like I've said before, are so like now will June give Alicia a test and see that she's got some kind of metal poisoning absolutely that can happen it's fear but this episode oh my god it wants you to think otherwise she wakes up with earbuds in and the classical music from the other room she goes to find the source of it and meets new character Paul a mostly deaf former musician what did you do? and we find out he lost his hearing from the warhammers that hit he survived but he lost his wife and his hearing the same day he later reveals the reason he keeps trying to blast all this music all the time is to snuff out the noise that he keeps hearing in his head of his wife's screams because that's the last thing he ever heard and I really like that. The last thing I ever heard, her scream. My it was it was sad and melancholy in a good way. Paul had some really cool scenes. I just wasn't keen on the final act, the blasting of the music. I mean, fair enough, they did that, it worked. But then he offers to play the bagpipe so Alicia can run. I get it, distraction, sacrifice. But I just thought it was a bit stupid. Why not just run off anyway? Why not hide behind the door? So when he comes in and goes to shoot Paul, you can kill him like you do everyone else. I don't see why he had to die. But I get it, wife, sentimental. Last thing he ever did was play the bagpipes to save Alicia. There's obviously a multitude of ways it could have went to have him live, but the whole point of it, the narrative is he, they wanted him to die by the end of it, to affect Alicia and for her to go on. And what she learned from this man losing his wife and his hearing and then his life is that she should listen to her dreams more. I had a dream when I was in the bunker. Okay, cut it off. I don't know why you're looking like that. You brought this clumsiness to fear. This is your fault. So Alicia's dreams are essentially premonitions of the future. She runs off, sees a young girl in a gas mask, then she passes out and then sees another version of herself saying, Padre, follow me, which was really cringy. If I saw myself in my dream saying, Padre, follow me, I'd knock Lil Bro out. Then she turns around to see the entire fear car standing there staring at her, which made me depressed. It's upsetting that characters are introduced like Paul only to die when they could do that exact same thing with existing characters and it maybe even mean a lot more. It's not that there's bad characters, it's that there's lingering ones. I've noticed Strand, Wendell and John Senior aren't in this picture, so I'm hoping that's not Alicia really wishing the future. But essentially Alicia's dream was telling her to listen to herself. That's why she saw herself saying, follow me, Padre. I think this girl can mean one of two things. It can be in 
interpreted as her seeing her younger self or this is an actual character she saw out on the road and she's going to be in the show soon likely the latter she saw this kid in her dream and in reality she will likely play a big part in her finding padre but thanks to paul telling her to listen to herself more she does and uh, herself is saying go find padre so she will even if right now she doesn't believe it exists i think she will find it then in episode 10 we meet new character 15 year old arlie and he's trying to become a ranger howard says if you want to become a ranger you've got to catch this certain butterfly it's obviously part of strand's twisted profound plan so he goes and hunts for this butterfly then he hears someone nearby and it's charlie strand's men find them both and take her in i looked and i'll be 13 this week She's not in any universe 12. It's revealed that the whole point she even got herself into the tower was to turn the beacon off as part of Morgan's plan. So I hope her saying she's nearly 13 was part of that lie. Ali has to take Charlie on a mission to go and retrieve a panel from a lift system. On the way they enter a bowling alley, there was this little awful moment and it led to Ali reminiscing about his dad Muhammad. He sees a picture of him bowling with his dad and he explains how his dad Muhammad called him Ali, Muhammad Ali, named after the boxer. Charlie goes in by herself, he waits outside. She apparently got into a fight, we don't even see what that is, but he, she apparently gets into a fight and loses her gas mask. She would later be found to have radiation poisoning, so she's ill and doesn't have that much long left. Charlie gets a bit too trusting and reveals to Ali the whole plan with Morgan. She wasn't really wanting some kind of new life at the tower, she's there for a mission to betray them. But says meeting Ali changed that, she might just live with him now but he doesn't take it locks her in the lift and tries to walk off but goes back for her anyway when they go back to the tower they find out she's got radiation poisoning and again it's weird we don't even see how she lost her gas mask in the first place but yeah her days are actually numbered like she's gonna die Ali goes to see her and says come here before you die we've got to be even more cringy and he takes her to this room where he's emptied all the butterflies out all of strands butterflies I don't know what you expected to happen from that it felt like the showrunners really thought they were doing something here like this is gonna be they're gonna love this. Ali trusts Charlie now. They're both young, it makes sense. They're gonna be naive. He agrees to her plan and he gets caught. And this is where they kind of fix everything about episode 10 that you might not have been keen about. Howard almost manically starts strangling him. This is what Strand would want, he says. And he throws Ali off the top of the tower. Early on in the episode, we saw an example of that and Ali asked why he did it. And the same thing happened to him. Charlie sees it happen. For me, episode 10 was good because of that. They fixed it. I was sitting there just so happy that they had actually done that. Actually had Charlie look at it. She was shocked by it. Then as June's comforting, Charlie about what happened, a butterfly flies next to her as a sign from the dead. Almost a reincarnation of Ali. Now on the subject of Charlie, she's got radiation poisoning, she's dying. That's the only thing that will stop Madison from doing anything to her. Now, do not tell me that this mother is not going to be at all angry at Charlie and will not kill her. Madison before would have killed Charlie after w what happened. But now Madison after being through all of that stuff past the stadium that we're still yet to see. Not in a million years would she not kill Charlie. So I think yeah the reason Madison won't kill Charlie is because Charlie by the time Madison gets here is already dead. There is no way around it. There's no context you can add in there for me to not think that would happen. The only world, the only show we can see where Madison is back and Charlie isn't killed by her is if she's already dead. She's gone on far too long now and it's a massive ask to have her on the same show with Madison and her not doing anything. That is stupid, that's silly, that's almost insultingly bad. The whole point Madison stayed in the stadium and had to sacrifice herself in the first place was because of what Charlie did. Fair enough. She was a kid, she was used, she was a spy. Okay, I can look past that. But then she killed Nick. She did all this stuff and the only way Madison's gonna see past that all the time she spent away from Alicia, all the time that she will never get back from Nick is because of Charlie. You can say, oh, she was a kid. No, the whole reason Nick was killed was because of him thinking Madison was dead. She sacrificed herself. She spent so long away from them to find Alicia again, but to know that she will never get time with Nick back. No, she's done. This is where it stops. They could just have Charlie live. Maybe she gets better. She's on the same show with Madison just walking around. Madison forgives her. No. 
I've been receptive to Charlie, okay, fair enough, but the mother of Nick. I know forgiveness is a big thing in The Walking Dead shows, but that's too far, that's a massive ask. So I am excited, whatever it turns out to be, Madison being back is going to be a lot more grounded, whether you like her or not, and I think it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it, but what do you think? What do you think is going to happen to Charlie? Do you think she will just succumb to the radiation, or do you think she can survive? And do you think Alicia is immune? However silly it sounds, do you actually think it's going to happen? Let me know down below what you think. And of course, press the like button if you enjoyed the video. In a few seconds, my other videos will pop up. Make sure you check them out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.